Jonathan, I want to ask you as a cognitive psychologist, what makes art transcendent? And I must begin by asking you to define transcendent uh, in an, a, an operational way so that you can uh, ta properly target uh, that for uh, experimental design. Well, I think that there are a lot of different ways to think about transcendence. And I think there are, one could imagine transcendent being a full on mystical like experience, and I, I would love to study that. But I think there are more modest definitions of transcendence that I think really hold water. And from my perspective, a more modest characterization of transcendence would be opening you up to perspectives or understandings that you wouldn't otherwise have. So changing your cognitive understanding in a more expansive way. Okay, what, what would be some examples of that that, are, that can be subject to experimental design? Sure. So one way would be that when someone encounters art, that it prompts an experience of curiosity where they're wanting to seek knowledge in a way that they weren't previously inspired to do, mm -hmm. or where they are inclined to think about things from a different perspective, imagining uses for objects, that, common everyday objects that they might not have otherwise thought of, or uh, having a, an appreciation for other people's perspectives in a way that they hadn't before, a sense of intellectual humility, a variety of different measures that we're gonna be actively considering of how we might change people's perspective through the exposure to art and, under, and enable them to understand things differently and perhaps better. You come into this with the hypothesis, which is uh, both socially good and intellectually fulfilling, but how dangerous is it when you have a, a hypothesis that seems right and, and it, it is pro-social, uh, but how can that influence you as an experimenter to bias your results unknowingly? So one of the challenges that scientists increasingly recognize as important is that their particular conjectures, hypotheses, the thing that they want to have happen can bias how they analyze the data, can cause them to, if this didn't work, well, let's analyze it that way. But there's been really some major advances in how to overcome that challenge. In particular, increasingly, myself and others are pre-registering our studies, indicating exactly what we're gonna do and exactly how we're going to analyze the data. And when you have that locked in, that prevents you from, if, well, it didn't work like this, so we'll do it like that. Now, admittedly, sometimes when you do that, you discover we analyzed it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. If we had thought of analyzing it this other way, it would have worked out better. And that's okay because you just do run the study again yeah pre-registering the new analysis. Right. So by locking in your analyses ahead of time and then replicating results, we can help to minimize this bias that can creep in. What progress can be made in showing the relationship between art and transcendence, especially in your modest definition of it? I think that there are a lot of different ways in which the experience of art can cause modest but real changes in our perspectives. And as long as we have sensitive measures and imaginative approaches, I feel confident we're gonna identify those ways. Is there any danger of, as um, cognitive uh, scientists discover ways that art can change behaviors, that that can be misused by uh, forces from advertising to uh, authoritarian governments? Uh, in propaganda to, uh, to, to manipulate feelings. I mean, that has to be the case. I mean, we know that propaganda has been very effective in, in drawing on artistic principles for who knows how long. So absolutely, I think that's a, that's a risk. But I think knowing the ways in which that can be done and appreciating it and making it explicit actually helps us to prevent ourselves from being influenced by it because we can sort of see how things are happening. And I also think though, that even though it's possible that there are these ways, the types of uh, elements that we're looking at, such as intellectual humility, recognizing that there are alternative perspectives, mm -hmm. uh, empathy, recognizing that there, we need to consider other people's experiences, that those particular aspects would be more challenging to use in a problematic way.